What is up everybody? This is General Spear here. Welcome back to another episode of Knights of the Old Republic of the Light Side campaign. How y'all doing today? Hope you're all having a good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, peeps, it has been some time since I've recorded this particular series and whatnot. We are back here with, uh, who do we name this guy again? Oh yeah, Christopher. <laughs> Of course um back here with this with an episode here and uh, it's been a while it's been a while um partly because of the fact that uh it's just been some time i've been really busy really 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 busy so yeah i've had commissions i've had other projects going on i've had through our streets we cannot sit idly by while this pox infects our society. I've had other work going on and everything, but what we're doing today for this episode and for this series, since we have the Sith armor, we're going to go ahead and uh, put it on our fancy, because we're going to go down to the lower city. Another patrol heading down to the lower city. Well, good luck. I've heard it's pretty rough down there. There's a big swoop gang war going on, you know. You better watch yourself. Those gangs will take a shot at anyone, even us. It's too bad we don't have the manpower just to sweep those slums clean. Understandable. Alright, so we're going down to the lower city, and we can just go right on by, because the guard is letting us. So down to the lower city we go. Do, 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 do. And what I'm going to do very quickly before we get into a battle, because we will pretty much go into a battle right off the bat, is we're going to get on some better armor. Because the Sith armor is got 13 defense as well, actually, and a defense bonus of 2 with a max de dexterity bonus of 8. The light armor is better. <laughs> Not in terms of dexterity, but definitely defense. Which we do need. And looks like a fight is about to ensue. I think they're losing the guys that we intend to help out. Okay, that was a really long, uh, long sentence there, but what we can do... Ah. This is this a slight problem? Oh no! Oh no! Oh dear God! Uh huh. Come on, Karth. There we go. Okay, so my sword fighting skills are definitely yes. not up to snuff. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, ah, crap. Can I not move again? Yes. Nope. <laughs> what did I do to fix this problem the last time? Uh huh. Yeah, I can't move with the Karth again. That's no good. Med packs, ah, oh, crap. Crap and criminy. I know how we'll fix this. Karth, could you aim be a little bit better, please? I mean, it'd be very much appreciated. Oh, what do you know? He sure. actually got something. And he's able to move again. Wonderful. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. It's a little amusing. 
Oh crap. Oh, okay, sure. now I can move with Karth. Okay, good. Good. God, movement in this game. I don't know what's going on. It's a little weird. It's a little weird and frustrating, not gonna lie. I think before we head on, we're gonna go into these through the standard door and go to the lower city apartments. See what's up in here. A lot of badness. I can say that much. I think we'll toss down a grenade. There's a group of them. Ooh. That killed him right out, which is very nice. Ah, crap. Thank you, Karth. That was very much appreciated. Give me the remains. A med pack. I'll take one of those, definitely. I'll take all the med packs I can get. Now, we do gotta be careful of what particular door we go through, because I think if memory serves... There are some baddies down here. Like, I, I mean, there are obviously baddies right now that we're fighting. But there are worse baddies down here. And I don't know if it's here or if it's another apartment altogether. But it's bad. I think we'll toss down another grenade. Thank you. Ah. Uh-huh. Oh, nice. Like that? How'd you like that? Gotta whittle oh. him down some. There we go. Let's go. Okay. We have leveled up. Attributes. What do we want to go for? That is the question. Could do dexterity. Intelligence would be really, really nice. Um, strength could also be good, too. And especially for stuff with close combat weapons and everything. Yeah, let's go with strength. Skills. Can I do some cross skills with some stuff? Not really. Might get one point into demolition. That takes an extra skill that I don't have. And treat injury. Feats. What do I want to do here? Two weapon fighting? Possibly. But I feel like critical strike might be useful. Conditioning could also be good. Ooh, actually, you know what? Hmm. Dueling might not be a bad idea. Given that I am predominantly doing um melee weapons... Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And as soon as I can get out of this uh, a bubble of critical stuff at the moment. There we go. So we defeated that gang boss and his enforcer. Which is actually really nice. There's a antidote um, pack. Ooh, yes please. Yes, please. Now, let's see. Karth, you have your blaster and a regular blaster. I'm going to give you a heavy blaster. And a combat suit for extra defense. Yes, just like that. Okay. Now, we've still not explored this entire place yet. It would be really nice to get another frag grenade, which we don't have. Oh, this bit. I actually forget how this goes. There's a particular... There's some items in here that I forget the order of. But what I'm going to do, just in case is... Go solo mode. So, let's go to the desk. Let's go to the trio. Let's... Yeah. We'll get that. 
items in here. And we're going to look at this. That's not what I wanted. Let's see. Uh, let's read this. Uh, Guts and Glory, a chronicle of the amazing uh, story of the Twisted Tr Rancor Trio by uh, Gilfos Uxeris. I think I've actually pronounced it right. A work in progress. Okay. The origins of what would eventually become the most famous band in the galaxy are surprisingly humble. The brains behind the group, manager Githos Uxaris, founded the trio to earn a date with a young singer named Elinda. The ploy worked, uh, and Elinda became the first member of the band. Gilthos scrambled uh, to find the musicians to back her, and signed a Bith named Uja, and to be the lead musician. Soon after, he signed Uja's brother, Uji, to complete the trio. The band struggled at first. Elinda was a, was a fantastic singer, but Uja wasn't much of a musician. When Elinda threatened to quit, Gilthos fired Uja and signed another Bith named Lupa. Of course, this didn't go over with Uja's brother, Uji, or, and Uji quit. Fortunately, Lupa knew another musician named uh, Photo, who joined Uji, or joined to replace Uji. Led by Alinda's singing, the second incarnation of the Twisted Rancor trio became quite popular on their homeworld terrace, eventually attracting the attention of local legitimate business uh, of a local legitimate businessman, Davik Kang. Of course, we know about Davik by this point. Davik asked Gilthos to bring his group for uh, for a command performance. Oh, in for a command performance, Gilthos agreed, realizing that this could break the band's uh, big uh, be the band's big break. Uh, unfortunately, Elinda had a, her, 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 her had heard certain understate unsubstant Upsubstantent rumors about Davik Kang and the connections to the exchange. Fearing for her life, she refused to go on his estate to reform. Many felt without that many that felt that without Alinda's singing, the band would crumble, but Gilthos came up with a brilliant plan to save the group by hiring Alinda's sister, Ashana. As the new leader uh, uh, as the new lead singer of the on the eve of their scheduled appearance as Davik, at Davik's uh, estate. Man, words today are not coming fluidly. Githos knew that he was taking a risk. If Shana couldn't perform at Alinda's level, Davik, uh, Davik's infamous temper would have a dire con consequences for the entire band. However, if Shana could match her sister's performance, then Davik was likely to sign the band for a big-time touring contract. It was a risk, but the tr Twisted Rancor trio was founded on Gluts and Glory. There's no further entries. Okay, so what needs to happen is we need to follow the order in which people were hired. Uh, so, and Linda's first, and then it comes Uja and Uji. And after that... Lupa, and after that, Photo, and then after all those guys, it is going to be Ashana. So that's the way we, we do this, so it might take a try or two. So we go first, Alinda, who's the first one. We go to Uja. We go to Uji, and then it's Lupa, and, oops, 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 come on, let me, let me, let me, Photo, it almost sounds like Frodo, and then Ashani, or excuse me, Ashana. And in theory, that should unlock the case. So for those of you that have never played this and wonder what the order is, that's the order. And that's how you figure it out, too. 
So we got out of that 50 credits plus an Enchani Fiber Armor, which is less in defense, but significantly more in dexterity. And it is upgradable, which is really nice. So I'll take it. I'll definitely take it. Alright, so Karth, come back here. The reason why I went on solo mode is just on the off chance that I got that wrong. There is a blast radius with the crate. And if I, you know, if I died, which, you know, there is a blast radius that could fit, potentially fill up the entire room. If I died, or if my character, you know, quote unquote, got knocked out unconscious, Karth would still be around at least. So, fun stuff. We're gonna go ahead and try our hand at security here. It's a low security door. Uh, okay, so this is another person here. Uh, what are you doing here? This place looks abandoned. None of your business. Just turn around and go back the way you came. If you know what's good for you. Persuade, are you in some kind of trouble? Do you want to talk about it? Failure. Sometimes it's something you want to get mixed up in. Look, do yourself a favor and just leave me alone. I'm here. Um. So this guy we're supposed to be able to help. What are you doing here? Okay. I guess I can tell you probably find out on your own and eventually anyway Zanx is giving me is giving bounties away like candy or so I hear my name is Matrick uh, Matrick I used to work for the exchange but all the violence <coughs> and killing started to get to me I knew what I was doing was wrong so I turned to the state's evidence my testimony helped put some of the biggest criminals on terrace away from life, but Davik didn't like seeing his friends go down, so now he's got a bounty out of my head. Maybe there's some way I can get you help get you out of this mess. I don't think there's much anyone could do. I'm sick of getting I'm getting sick of running. I decided to make a stand right here. Uh, so none of these t first two options would work. I mean, we could uh, have him pay Davik off, but the bounty is pretty big for him, and I don't really want to give away credits on this one. But one of the reasons why we have that premature detonator is for option number three. Maybe you could fake your own death. We I've already thought of that. I came up with a plan on how to do it, but I can't pull it off while I'm holed up here. Tell me your plan, I might be able to help you out. The trick is getting Davik to buy in when there's no body found at the scene. It looks like I died in a massive explosion, he won't be suspicious when the when my corpse never turns up. If I had an accomplice to go back and tell Davik that they were one that they were the one who set off the explosion and eliminate me, I might I think I might be home free. I have some demolitions experience in my own days in the exchange, so I could set it all up, but I need someone or I need to get my hands on a premature detonator. I have a excuse me, not a premature. A pre a permacrete detonator. Take it. Let me see. Yes, we should do the trick. There won't be anything left of this apartment, but some scorching of the walls after I set this bad boy off. Now, technically speaking, we should have done this after we searched the apartment, because there are some containers and all that stuff, but it's okay. We're going to run out of the apartment. That was quite a blast. Don't go in there. The whole roof might cave in on your head. Look, I'm not a man for long goodbyes, but I wanted to say thanks. If it wasn't for you, I'd be a dead man. But now I won't have to worry about uh, any more bounty hunters coming after me. So good luck and goodbye. Now that I'm dead, I can't be seen wandering in the streets. Okay. Light side points gained and some experience. Nice, nice, nice. Karth wants to talk to us. Yes, what's on your mind? 
Uh, is this a good time to ask you any more questions? I guess I did say you could ask me questions later, didn't I? Is this really necessary? Not if you have a problem with it. No, no, I don't have a problem with it, really. Go ahead and interrogate me. This isn't an interrogation. I've never, never said that. No, I was just joking. Though, you do seem to be full of questions. It's rather refreshing, to be honest. Let me ask you something first, though. I've been going through the battle aboard the Endar Spire over and over in my head since we crashed. Some things just don't add up for me. Maybe you could tell me what happened, from your perspective. Uh, like you said when we first met, Bastila didn't have time to use her powers. True. Bastila is as powerful as I say. She's the one who defeated Darth Revan, after all. Mm. I guess that no Jedi ability, no matter how powerful, makes up for being completely surprised and outmatched. We didn't choose that battle anyway, it got forced on us. Hell, I'm, I'm, I'm just as surprised that any of us are alive to talk about it. Come to think of it, it's more than a little surprising that you happen to be here, isn't it? I mean, just what is your position with the Republic fleet anyway? I'm a soldier. There's nothing... I'm sure there isn't anything unusual about that, is there? I don't know. Unless you consider that you were a last-minute addition to the crew roster and you just happened to be one of the survivors. Um... What's so odd about being, me being added to the crew at the last minute? You were the only one. Not to mention that Bastila's party was the one who requested your transfer. Why would Bastila request my transfer? The Jedi requested numerous things when they came on board. I mean, hell, they practically took over the ship, as far as I could tell. Considering your connection to Bastila and the Jedi, whether you know it or not, your presence here seems a little convenient. I'm probably wrong, and this is probably nothing, I know. I learned a long time ago not to take things at face value ever, and I hate surprises. What do you mean by surprises? I mean, I have to expect the unexpected, just to be safe. Let's see, what do we want to play? How do we want to play this here? Um, are you always this suspicious? Look, it has nothing to do with you personally. I don't trust anyone, and I have my reasons. And no, I'm not going to discuss them, so can we just keep our mind on more important things? Yes, let's do that. Good. Like I said before, I prefer action to talk anyway. <laughs> and yet you're the one that wanted to talk to us. Alright, anyways, that is that portion of the lower city. We're going to kind of move forward here. Over to this way. So got a little bit more to uh, know about what's going on in uh, in his head. Now I think what we need to do is we actually need to go in here. This is where we go for all the bounties if memory serves. And we can just go right in. Bouncer ain't gonna stop us or nothing. Greetings, stranger. My name is Galrud. Oh, Pazak. No, I'm not terrible. gonna do this. <laughs> I'm terrible at Pazak. Go away. Oh, Kalonord. One. Three. Okay. So I'm not going to mess with him. I mean, the, I, he's pretty much going to do the same thing to us if we provoke him enough, so I'm not going to mess with him. We are no way prepared to take on Callow Nord. But what we will do is remember the person that we met in the upper city? Huh? What? Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. My attention was kind of focused on the Twi'lek dancers. Look at them waggle those head tails. I don't normally go for these alien girls, but I've had some bad experiences with my own species lately. Maybe it's time for a change. Know what I mean? 
You're the guy that put the bounty on Dia's head, right? You're here about that? I guess Zax must have mentioned me to you at the bounty office. Fair enough. I don't care who takes her out. Just so long as the job gets done. I can't let her get away with what she did. That wench tried to cut me with a vibro blade. And why would she do that? Because she's crazy. She started screaming that I was making advances, and the next thing I know she's coming at me with a knife. Yeah, right. Sounds to me like she was defending herself. I admit I was drunk. Maybe I got a little fresh. But it was no big deal. She didn't have to cut me. I want the bounty on Hedia's head removed. What? I can't do that. Think how it would look. I work for Davik. I've got a certain reputation to uphold. I can't let her get away with this. There has to be payback. Although, I do feel a little guilty about all this. Dia's a good-looking gal. It'd be a shame to kill her. Tell you what, I'll take 200 credits in exchange for lifting the bounty. Um... We'll go with this option here. If I let her get away with it. Fine, take your, take the 200 credits. Don't worry. I'll so we lost 200. But there will be plenty of times in which we'll make a lot more credits. Don't you worry. <coughs> I told you to leave me alone. So give me some space, bug eye. Your breath smells like bantha poodoo. Who you call a little girl, Chuba Face? Just a sec, boys. Sawbar, a little help here? I need you to rip the legs off some insects. <laughs> So I'm not a hundred percent sure. Quit complaining. You can finish I'll speak on this later. in just a second. Besides, you need the exercise, so get over here. You got a problem with me? Then you got a problem with Big Z. So unless you want to take on my furry friend, I suggest you greenies hop on out of here. Okay. I'll speak on it just a second. Hey, relax, Big Z. No need to be rude. Sorry about that. But Wookiees ain't much for conversation, you know? Say, I don't recognize you, and I know pretty much everyone in the lower city. You must be new down here. I guess that makes me and Big Z your official welcoming committee. Uh, let's see. Hey, we speak the same language. It's not that strange. Most aliens can speak basic. They just prefer to use their own language. But I grew up here on Terra, so I just sort of got used to speaking the native tongue. You showed a lot of guts dealing with those Valkyrs, kid. You got a name? My name's Mission Veo, and this big Wookiee is my best friend Zalbar. I'd offer to give you a tour, but the streets down here aren't safe. But if there's anything else you need... Uh, let's see... I had a Wookiee and a toy like a street urchin and it'd be best friends. We just kind of fell in together. It ain't easy on your own here in the lower city. Everyone's always looking to push you around. So we noticed. Still, you seem like an odd pair. When I met up with Zalbar, it seemed like a pretty good match. I knew we could look out for each other. With my street smarts and his muscle, we make a great team. I'll be going now. You going? Yeah, this dive is pretty boring. No action around here. Come on, Big Z, let's go. <laughs> but I haven't finished eating. <laughs> Can't you think about something besides your stomach for five minutes? Come on. We'll go see if there's anything good to eat at the Beck base. All right. So we'll have plenty of time to ask more questions of her later. Uh, but for right now, I think that's going to, I think, end the episode. Um, we've done quite a bit in the lower city so far, and there's still a lot more to do here in the lower city. So we're going to be spending some time down here, definitely for several episodes. Um, 
So yeah, that's gonna be very, very exciting. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something. Oh yeah, so the person that plays Mission, the voice actor, I'm not 100% certain, but it sounds like the voice actor that uh, did Padme Amidala in the Clone Wars. I can't swear to it, but it sounds very, very similar. Very, very similar. So that's that's what I was going to say and not interrupt or try not to interrupt at the same time. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this episode. Feel free, as always, to Hulk smash that like button. Comment in the comment section below if you're new. Do not forget to subscribe. And as always, may the Force be ever in your favor.